A lot of people have bought an Ender 3 Pro recently, so I thought I'd give you a complete assembly guide, including some tips that I've learned along the way, because I've probably assembled over 50 of these things. I'll explain it all on today's Film on Friday. Film on Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Here's the parts laid out on my bench ready to assemble. My first tip, and this is optional, but I suggest you get a set of T-handle Allen wrenches. It makes it so much easier. There's really only three sizes we're going to use, 2.5, 3, and 4 millimeter. I'm not going to follow the manual exactly, but this first step is the same. You get the tall arm with the two holes at the bottom and place it on the left hand side of the base. Then you use two screws to tighten it up and this is where one of the T-handle Allen wrenches become very nice to get that nice and tight. Now we go to the other side and make sure the two holes in the arm are on the inside of the printer and place it on the right side of the base. Again two screws to hold them in place, tighten those up and we're ready for the next step. At this point I like to check the base for how loose it is. You can put the thing on the side, resting on one of the arms, and then adjust the eccentric nuts to make sure that this base is nice and tight, but actually moves smoothly back and forth. My second optional tip makes it easier to level the bed. Take the screwdriver that's included with the kit and use that as a guide so it just slides between the bottom of the bed and the base, and just adjust the nuts until the spring is compressed to that size. It'll make things so much easier in the future. We're going to use the M416 screws to build the carriage. There's a large hole and then two small holes and it fits over the assembly here, the extruder assembly. These screws are a little bit hard to put in and then you have to reach through the other bracket to tighten them up. Now I suggest tighten them but don't go all the way super tight. Just enough so you can still move the arm a little bit. Now insert the belt with the teeth down and pull it through. It makes it easier to use needle nose pliers to pull it because it's hard to grab with your fingers. Do both sides and now we can move to the next step. Flip it upside down and then slide the hot end assembly opposite side of the extruder motor. If it's loose, tighten up the eccentric nut. This should roll smoothly. There's two screws that hold the bracket to the other side. Tighten them just snug and then come back and tighten the back one and then you can pivot this thing so it's flush against the edge of the beam and then tighten the second screw. And once it's tight you should see a flush edge just like this. The belt idler goes next on the opposite side of the bracket. It's got two T-nuts, slide this on and then tighten the screws. But not all the way, just snug because we're going to adjust this in a minute. Now stick the belt into the groove and slide the hot end over the top of it. And then we can pull the belt through the other side. The needle nose pliers come in handy here once again. Bring it all the way around the idler, flip it over, and put the belt into one of the grooves of the hot end. Make sure the belt goes around the spline tooth wheel and then around the idler. And then install the opposite side of the belt into its groove on the hot end assembly. Now take the nozzle wrench that comes with the printer, slide it between the beam and the idler, and this will put a nice pressure on the belt. So now you can reposition the idler, get it centered to the beam, and tighten the screws. Once you tighten one, it's probably going to twist, so adjust it again, make sure it's nice and even, and then tighten the second one. And if you get this right, that belt should ride right in the middle of the wheel. Now bring the assembly onto the beams and as you push it up and down you should see all wheels turning. If all wheels aren't turning, adjust the eccentric nuts. There's one on the inside of each beam. Adjust until it smoothly moves all six wheels. Now we want to make sure this beam is level. What I like to do is measure the spool holder bracket, which is 15 millimeters, and cut a piece of cardboard out of the box to match it. Then I place the beam on one side with the bracket and then use the cardboard as like a guide and I get it in position and then hold that bracket where those two screws are, bring the thing all the way up and then tighten those two screws. Now you may have to do this two or three times to get it perfect, but when you do, that cardboard should slide right under the beam perfectly knowing both sides are the same height. Now here's another optional tip which I do on some of my machines. You can put the bracket on the one side and then you go to the other side and actually use the bracket as a guide to drill a hole. I start the hole, then I lift the beam up and finish the hole. I continue drilling until I'm through the beam. 
and now I have an access hole. So I can take the Allen wrench, slide it through the bracket, through the beam, and into that screw. Now I can level this beam without lifting it on and off several times, and it only costs me a hole in the beam. Not a bad price. Now we'll grab the M418 screws, slip them into the motor mount, and we're going to mount this to that beam. I like to tighten one side then the other, back and forth until it's in straight. Now insert the threaded rod until it bottoms and then lift it just a little bit and then tighten the set screw to tighten the clamp around the threaded rod. I also suggest making sure the bottom one is tight. Now a good thing to check is make sure that it's straight all the way up. If it isn't, try to adjust things until it is. By hand, turn the threaded rod into the brass T-nut. If this is really tight over time, you may have to adjust those two screws in the T-nut and loosen them just a tiny bit. It should move smoothly as you turn by hand. Now move it all the way to the top till the wheel is just below the beam. Then grab the M5 by 25 screws and the top bar. Make sure the wires are under the top bar, not over the top. And then position this at the beam and then put the four screws in. I like to tighten one side then the other back and forth. Again make sure the cross beam moves up and down smoothly from the bed to the top. Now we want to make sure everything's square. I like to take the bed off and then place two rulers, one on each side, that are square to the bed. Then put another ruler off the beam to make sure that they're equal on both sides. If they're not, loosen up those screws at the top and twist it and then tighten the screws on one side and then the other until you get this thing square so both sides are equal distance from the edge of the bed. Now I'll install the power supply behind the beam. Make sure if you're in the US to flip the switch to 115 volts and there's two screws, M420 screws that hold it in place. They're the silver ones. Make sure the wires on the inside and then put the two screws in place and tighten it up. We'll use the M5 by 8 screws to mount the display. There's just two screws that hold it but there's an EXP3 connector. Make sure the wire goes into there and it's keyed so it goes in that spot. Now you're ready to install it with the two screws. Tighten one then the other until it's tight. There's two screws and T-nuts that hold the spool bracket in place. I like to put it on one side and then tighten those up. The spool holder arm goes through and then there's a nut that twists to tighten it. It should point to the back of the machine. There's two caps that just press in place to the ends of the arm. Connect the two yellow connectors by going under the arm and then snap these two into place. This is your power. The Z connector goes into the base motor and there's only one way it can go in, it's keyed. Push that in place. And now we'll move up to extruder. There's a connector that you screw into place. I just hand tighten this and then slide it in the PTFE tube and then put in a little blue locking clip. Sometimes you have to unscrew this to feed filament so that's why I don't tighten it with a wrench. Then take the harness and just kind of twist it into the spot where it holds it. There's an E connector. Connect that to the extruder connector the same way you did the Z. And then there's also an X connector. Put that into the X motor the same way. The X stop switch is hard to reach so I use needle nose pliers to put the connector in place. Lower the cross beam until the nozzle is just touching the bed. Connect the wire to the Z stop switch and then put it in place, but you're probably not going to have room because the switch is going to be pressed all the way and there's no more adjustment. This is where optional tip number four comes in. They put this little knob on here so it positions the switch at the right height, but it never is. So I just cut it off. Now I can slide the switch up and down until it just clicks and then I'll tighten the two T-nuts. There's tie straps to hold the wires. I just try to strap everything together so it's not going to get pinched or in the way. So two on the main loom and then I take two tie straps and I group them together and go around the big beam and that holds the ribbon cable that goes to the LCD. And that should do it. You can plug it in and start using it. The Ender 3 Pro is now fully assembled. If you're looking to buy a 3D printer, check out Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. ComGrow is an official reseller of Creality products. They also carry a full line of Ender 3s, including the latest Ender 3 S1 Pro with high temperature operation and built-in auto level. Need parts? They have them too. Everything from filament to nozzles to upgrades like silent boards 
and direct drive extruders. So visit Creality3DOfficial.com today. For leveling the bed, I recommend my Filament Friday e-leveler tool. You download a G-code file and run that and it will position the head at each corner. You adjust the knobs until the LED just lights and then you have a near perfect level bed. There's also a file you download as part of it that draws squares on your bed. When it's done, you'll have a set of squares that should be equally positioned around the bed and smooth. And when it's done, it should look nice and smooth just like this. A perfectly level bed. If you want more help with your Ender 3, check out some of the videos that are popping up. I got a whole bunch of videos on the Ender 3. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way to do it. And if nothing else, click on that Film of Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Film of Friday.